Today we're talking about self-confidence because it's really, really important. It's pretty much the foundation when it comes to our style and even the most amazing outfit cannot save us from the lack of it. So what I have is actually five amazing tips that I used to really build my self-confidence because when I was a teenager, I was insecure, who wasn't? So I really hope you find this video useful and let's get into it. So the first tip is to really, really accept yourself and the way you look right now. Not in the future, not when sun and moon aligns, <laughs> right now. And I know this may sound obvious, like the Kim, thank you so much, but how do I get there? I have a tip, I have a trick, and I will explain exactly how you can build your acceptance. But the reason why this is so important, because no matter which outfit you put on, if you don't feel comfortable in your body, if you don't like your face, if you don't like yourself, it's gonna show. Your body language will always tell on you. <laughs> so you want to really accept yourself and like yourself first before doing any kind of a style experiments and how you get there is actually through mirror work so how I used to do this is every day at night I would stand in front of the mirror and I would find 10 things I genuinely liked about myself I wasn't playing pretend <laughs> it wasn't like oh I don't like this but then I was convincing myself, yes, I like it, I like it, because that doesn't work. What I'm talking about here is genuinely finding 10 things you like or even love about yourself. They can be small or big, it doesn't matter. Something like, I love my white teeth, or I love my voluminous hair, I love my eyes, the color of my eyes, I love my complexion, I love my shoulders. It doesn't matter, small things, big things. And what that's gonna do is actually shift how you think about yourself. Because right now, the chances are that every time you walk past the mirror, you kind of criticize yourself. Maybe in the morning we wake up, we're doing our skincare, and then we think, I look tired today, look at those under eyes, I just look so ugly. And then we're putting the outfit on and we're thinking, I'm so fat, lose some weight already. Oh, this doesn't look nice at all. Oh, why do I have such a body? We can be stuck in this kind of loop because if we were criticized when we were younger or if we were comparing ourselves to magazines and social media, it's possible we can start criticizing criticizing ourselves. So with this exercise, you're actually gonna just shift the focus from negative to positive. And the good thing is that it works. I personally, I needed three months of this mirror work. And then I started noticing that even when I, I wasn't doing the exercise, when I was, you know, doing skincare in the morning or when I was just passing the, next to the mirror, I complimented myself and I was like, this is nice. I'm like, I'm loving this. <laughs> so then I got in the habit of complimenting myself every time I see myself, which is absolutely great. And also what I want to emphasize is that you don't have to love every single part of yourself, of your body, in order to feel confident. In the past, I was kind of thinking, okay, I have to like 100% of me, 100%, 100%. And when that didn't happen, I felt defeated, I felt disappointed and like I cannot be confident and happy. But what I personally found is that once you really identify things you like and you really focus on that, those things you kind of don't like that much, they don't really matter. Because if you look at yourself and you think, I have gorgeous eyes and voluminous hair, they are so pretty, and then you see kind of a few little spots, they don't really matter. You don't have to like them, but they don't matter as much. And also what I want to tell is that acceptance doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot change if we want to. If there are certain things we, we want to improve because we know it's gonna make us feel happier and healthier, that's absolutely fine. But at the same time, we also want to accept ourselves right now. We cannot live in the future. We cannot say I'm happy only when those things happen. We have to be happy and give ourselves permission to be happy right now. And then tip number two is to really, really pay attention to comfortable clothes because uncomfortable clothes, they really bug us. So we readjust, we move our body and then we just don't look relaxed. We don't look confident at all. So even if we have something like a really gorgeous top and we feel like, oh my God, this is so stylish. If it keeps sliding down, we're constantly gonna pull it up and readjust it. And we're gonna feel a little bit self-conscious because you know, in the back of our mind, we're gonna be, oh, this, I'm, expo I'm too exposed. I have to fix this. And it's not gonna look that great and confident. Or maybe we have like a that it's a little bit too short for our taste. Again, we're gonna constantly readjust it and gonna feel self-conscious. Or even when it comes to pain, if you have painful high heels, for example, 
then we're not gonna look confident because first of all when we're gonna have to walk we're gonna walk a little bit differently when you're in pain you kind of don't walk the same and second it can also limit us from doing stuff and you know just appearing confident and doing stuff and you know being involved with life and then also maybe we have some restrictive items that maybe they're not uncomfortable per se but you know then we cannot move certain things certain arms and in that case again we're not gonna look that confident and you know paying attention to comfort is really important and also I want to emphasize there is always always an overlap between comfort and style always we just have to find it and not settle for one or the other and then the third tip is to really stop chasing perfection because it doesn't exist spoiler alert yes I know <laughs> but I know nowadays when we have social media and we see so many filtered and photoshopped photos or even videos, <laughs> then it can kind of distort everything. And then we start thinking that this is what perfection looks like and we just, we're not good enough to achieve it. And then we are harder on ourselves. And oftentimes with perfectionist thinking, we think in black and white. So it's either a hundred percent or a zero. So when we have this perfect thing that we want to achieve and then we cannot achieve it we kind of say what's the point why even try and we give up and then we go to the zero so you cannot have self-confidence or even you know evolve your style with this kind of thinking it's really gonna limit you so what i personally do is if i'm happy let's say with my outfit like 80 to 90 percent that for me it's a great thing and to be honest there are moments where i'm like 100 percent my outfit is 100 percent, but it's not that common so for me being happy with 80 or 90 percent of my outfit i look in the mirror i'm like yeah this is an 87 today i'm absolutely fine with that and that's where i kind of that's what I strive for um, and that's what I wanted to share with you as well. You don't have to strive for 100% to be confident, to evolve your style. And then also problem for chasing perfectionism is that if you really focus on having the perfect outfit, then we're not gonna feel free to be creative and create new outfits because we're gonna be afraid. What if this is not perfect? It's gonna look weird, it's gonna look cringe, I'm gonna fail. <laughs> and failing, it's a huge part of style evolution and finding your style. You cannot find your style if you just keep repeating whatever you've been doing so far. You have to go outside of the box, try new outfits together, and sometimes they're gonna look a little bit weird. You're gonna look bad and think, oh my God, <laughs> what was I thinking? But that's normal, we all have those moments. That's why perfectionism doesn't have any place in finding your style and building your style confidence. If this video is useful so far, just quickly give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. So thank you very much and let's continue. And then tip number four is to really let go of what other people think about you because that's one of the most important things we have to do in life because it just stops us plain and simple. We're not experimenting with our outfits. We're constantly worrying about what other people think. So even if we go somewhere, um, then we can feel like I'm underdressed, I'm overdressed. Oh my God, what other people think about me. It's going to really show in our confidence. So we have to stop doing that. And also I want to mention that oftentimes worrying about what other people think about us and perfectionism, they go hand in hand because perfectionism is really a shield from rejection and disappointment. We believe wrongly that if we're perfect, then nobody can reject us, nobody, we cannot disappoint anyone, and then we're kind of safe, which is not true because perfection doesn't exist and people are different. <laughs> but even if you're not a perfectionist, you can still worry too much about what other people think about you. And I identified four reasons why we shouldn't worry too much. The first reason is that we cannot control what other people think. Like I said, <laughs> even if you put so much effort into something, even if we're perfect, there are still people that are gonna think we are weird, we look weird, our style is boring or basic or I don't know, too much, too little, it doesn't matter. You cannot control what other people think no matter what you do. So why worry at all? Now the second thing is that we often just guess what other people think about us. Very often people are not just gonna come to us and tell us, but we're gonna kind of keep guessing, oh my God, what are they thinking? What are they thinking? Oh my God, what if they think this? What if they think this? We're not actually 100% sure what they're thinking and dressing yourself based on what you think people think is just stressful and exhausting. So we shouldn't do that. And then the third thing is that even if some people come to us, they are blunt, they tell us, uh, they tell everything they think in our face, they often project. 
we people are very biased. We have our beliefs, some are good, some are, you know, more limiting, but everything we see, it's kind of through our own lenses. So when we give advice or when people come to us and they give us advice, <laughs> it's often through their lens, which should be taken with a grain of salt. Of course, we sometimes get valuable advice as well. I'm not saying all opinions and advice is bad, but we have to be aware of biases. We have to understand people, we are biases in general. And when we get an opinion, when we get, you know, a critique, thick or whatever, we have to understand, okay, where are they coming from? Do they have their own beliefs about that? Is this something that I think it's true and does it apply to me or it has more to do with them? So that's the third thing, we shouldn't worry about others. And then the fourth thing is that we don't need to worry about others in order to feel confident. That's the most important. Confidence, it's not about what other people think about you, but what you think about you. That's what confidence is really. And I read a quote once, if your confidence is built on compliments, it will shatter with criticism or something like that, <laughs> which just sums up everything really nicely. And the only people that I kind of worry about what they think is people that I know, people that I vetted, <laughs> people that I know really well and I respect them, I respect their opinion. In those situations, I put a little bit more weight on what they're saying. And even then, again, <laughs> I'm aware of the biases. So. I hope I convinced you that we shouldn't care about what other people think about us. It's really going to stop you from experimenting, having fun, feeling joyful, feeling creative. So let go and be free. <laughs> and now tip number five is really where everything comes together because everything that I told you so far, it's kind of mental shifts and letting go, letting go of negativity, perfection, what other people think about us, uncomfortable items, all of that. But once we achieve those mental shifts, then we can really start focusing and dressing for ourselves. And what we want to do is identify how we want to feel and then dress accordingly. So I truly believe clothes, they are a tool to help us feel the way we want to feel. They can do so, so, so much for us. But the problem that I often see and that I did in the past as well is that we don't really know how we want to feel. Maybe we just have just general idea like I want to feel good. That doesn't really tell you a lot when you're getting dressed in the morning. So my suggestion is to find three to five adjectives of how you want to feel every single day. And that's going to be your guide when getting dressed in the morning. So you can say, okay, I want to feel successful and cute and youthful and elegant. <laughs> or maybe I want to feel cool and edgy and welcoming and um, I don't know, pretty. <laughs> or I want to feel feminine and attractive. And um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm kind of running out of ideas, but you get the picture we all kind of have a different set of combination of how we want to feel every single day. So we want to spend some time identifying those so then we can dress like that every single morning. So this is absolutely where magic happens. Once you let go of the negative beliefs and then you really specifically identify how you want to feel and dress accordingly, you're going to be transformed. You're really going to be confident. Your style is going to be <laughs> so much more elevated. You're, you're going to allow yourself room to make mistakes, to evolve your style, to experiment. So your style is just going to be better and better and better from this point on. But if you want to improve your style confidence even more and go even deeper, then watch this video on how to find your style, personal style without chopping anything. It's a really great video. And also if you have any style confidence tips, let me know in the comments down below so, you know, they can help me and other people watching. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you next time.